Hi folks, it's Chef Kevin. I'm going to be making a miniature version of Eggs Benedict. This is going to be hors d'oeuvre size, which basically means it can be eaten in one or two bites. I'm going to be using store-bought pizza dough just out of convenience. It's not that I don't know how to make bread dough and there's not much difference really between the bread dough and the pizza dough. It's just that for this little video it wouldn't pay for me to make the, the actual bread dough. Alright, check me out. Okay folks, so what makes an egg benedict an egg benedict? Well there's a few things. First of all, you have to use an English muffin not a piece of bread. Now an English muffin is different than bread. An English muffin is fried in a pan using butter. It's not baked. And you also have to use a poached egg, which I'm going to be using a quail egg, a poached quail egg. And you should use Canadian bacon. The other thing is you must use a hollandaise sauce. So I'm going to combine all these ingredients into a miniature form. First thing I'm going to do is start rolling out the bread. Okay folks, this is my store-bought pizza dough. I've had this out for an hour or so to let it warm up a bit. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be rolling this out. What I'm looking for is a consistency of about three-eighths of an inch. Now this is my own creation. I haven't seen this done anywhere before. I haven't seen it on YouTube. So I'm breaking ground here. This is going to be an elegant little hors d'oeuvre or an appetizer. It's going to be quite different. Don't go nowhere. Now, what makes an English muffin an English muffin is not only the fact that it's fried or sauteed in a sauté pan, but an English muffin must have cornmeal on the outside of it. That's what gives it that little extra texture that we all seem to like. So I have the cornmeal, I'm trying to roll it into the dough. I've already done the other side. Okay. I have a cookie cutter here. The wrong one. I have this one here. This is two and a half inches diameter. And here are your perfectly shaped English muffin cutouts. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up my saute pan, get it nice and hot, 
get some butter ready and start cooking this. Okay folks, I got my saute pan. Nice and hot. Have some beautiful Irish butter in there. These will not take too long to cook. About three minutes per side. And the important thing to do after that is let them cool down before you make any other moves. The heat has to be released from the inside. Alright folks, these are going to cook away. You cannot buy these at the store in the mini version. At least I've never seen them. I've seen them in the full size and then there's a smaller one. But these are quite small. You're not going to find them at the grocer. You have to make them yourself. Okay folks, these are the English muffins that I just made and I think they came out pretty nice. They actually look like English muffins in a miniature version. You can see the so-called nooks and crannies. Nice. 
Okay. I have um, Canadian style bacon here. That's this is what is normally used for eggs Benedict. This is boar's head. It doesn't have to be boar's head, and it doesn't have to actually be Canadian. You can give yourself a little leeway on that. This is what they look like. And then I simply took my cutter and cut out the round pieces that will go on top of the English muffin as such. Okay, over here I have, this is actually a broiler pan. I have about a half inch of water in here. And I have a mini muffin tray that's going to sit right on top and that's how I'm going to poach them. Now these really wouldn't be considered poach per se because they're not floating in water but it's my experience that this is the best way to do it. This is much more presentable it seems that the quail egg is very difficult to poach. So that's what I'm going for. Going to put a little spray oil into some of the compartments. zoom in a bit. These are the quail eggs. You can see how tiny they are. This is going to be a most elegant hors d'oeuvre. I have my hollandaise sauce already pre-made. Trying to keep that warm. bit and that'll make the tops cook nicely. This is the tricky part is taking them from the muffin tray Okay folks, this is the tricky part. I actually just lost one because I took it out prematurely and it fell apart on me, so I'm down to two. Don't hold it against me though. I'm gonna warm up my Hollandaise sauce a bit. This is what they look like. And what I've done is loosened them up around the edges. 
so that they don't stick on me. And you really want to go for an egg that the yolk is runny. You don't want it to be overcooked. You want that you want that yolk. You want that yellow yolk running all over the place. Now these are one biters. And what one biters are is you eat them in one bite. It's cocktail food, it's it's an hors d'oeuvre. Usually eat in one or two bites. I'm going to go ahead and garnish this with a little cayenne pepper. All you need now is a mimosa. Or a glass of champagne. And that's it. Now let's see what this looks like as I cut it open. If I can find my knife. See that yolk running out? Thanks for watching. Mm.